Hello, I am Lisa Hennessy, and this is episode 101 of Knit, Pray, Crochet. And again, thank you guys for sticking with me all this time. And if you didn't get a copy of my book and you want a copy of my book, please make sure you post in the comments or email me at threadswithred at gmail.com and I can get a copy to you in the mail because um, I love I just want to share this book that I've written. Um, if you don't have it, I'd love to bless you with it. So this week, and okay, and I don't, I made this. I don't even know what it is. I just thought it is so pretty in Texas right now. It is, I think, maybe in the 50s, low 60s right now. Yesterday morning, I went on a, a little over a three-mile run with one of my running buddies, and it was 60 degrees. It was beautiful. I just love this weather. It's going to get up to 74, but right now I record upstairs and it's kind of cold. So I thought, oh, this was hanging over there. I'm like, oh, I'm going to put this on for my um, video. And so it feels kind of, you know, it's nice. It, I think this is a linen blend. It's really more of a spring scarf, but I just wanted to wear it while I was recording this. So going to what I knit this week, I did have some knitting ones. I'm trying to finish up Christmas gifts. So I made these two green scrubbies. And then I had to go to Dezo because I ran out of these spatulas. And um, these brown ones, while not the prettiest color, they're only $1.50. So I got, I think, three of these. And then this was hanging next to I go, oh, these are only $1.52. Now Dezo has a self-check. So when I scanned this, it was actually $3.50. So I put the other three or four that I had aside, and I just bought the one. So this and this was more square too. So anyway, so I finished these. I've got two sets for Christmas gifts. And then I have, my husband loves this smaller one that I made last year. And it's obviously a year old. And it's even as much as I've washed it, it is just kind of worn out and stained. But this spatula is still in good shape. So I haven't been able to find this silver sparkle scrubby yarn. So I just, I have red left over and I actually have some red scrubby washcloths that I use in my kitchen. So I'm just going to make a red top for this. I'm going to cut this off and repurpose it because it's still a good spatula. So I'm going to do that this week. Um, worked on some of my headbands for, for gifts. And this is a Lion Brand Pima Cotton. I don't even know where I got it, when I got it, but it's really nice and soft. So, and it was a brand new skein. So I, I made this one I cast on nine stitches and this one I did 11. Um, and I can probably get two more out of that skein and a couple hair scrunchies. So I'm gonna work on those this week. And this is my conundrum. This is my, which, okay, the name of the pattern is called Summer Slipover, right? That right there means it's more of a summer item. Well, and I used a bamboo cotton yarn. This is going to be for my daughter. It was going to be for my daughter. Oh my gosh, my, this is caught on something. I knit a lot of this. I'm almost done with the front. I think I have three more inches left, but it is, it's too lightweight because hence the summer slip over. Should it just, I don't know why I thought it'd be heavier, but it also, because I'm using this, this um, bamboo yarn. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe I'll just finish the front half today, I only have three inches left, put it aside and pick it back up in the spring, which I don't typically do. I like to finish my projects. And then there's also another part of me, you know, I don't like tearing things out, but this isn't really a summer color. It's more of a fall color. So I don't know. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I am going to finish the front, front part and then I ordered a bunch of yarn. Premier Yarn has got this huge online sale going on. Not that I need more yarn. Actually, I could use some yarn for certain projects. And if you spend $75, you get free shipping. So, of course, I had to spend $75 in yarn. But I got a lot of yarn. And I do a lot of charity knitting, so I don't like to spend a lot of yarn money on expensive yarn. One of the ladies in my knitting group was telling me about this petite knit holiday slip slip over and it's just like a little vest and so I bought some yarn on premier yarns to um, make this because it's a chunkier yarn and then I did buy some worsted weight yarn and I'm going to start over on this for my daughter because this is really more for me it's not I'm looking I'm thinking about something that can grow with my daughter being pregnant and this is definitely 
because you have a front and back and then it ties on the side so it can expand or you can tighten it. So this is going to be put aside, maybe torn out. I, I don't think I'm going to tear it out. Even though these are fall colors, you know, I could put a white t-shirt underneath it and make it more summery. I don't know. And it actually, Texas, because of our weather and the transition, this would actually be really good to wear. I'm not going to finish it. I'm thinking, well, maybe I should finish it. I could wear it for me. Um, but I could wear a turtleneck, lightweight turtleneck underneath this and wear it when we have today a 70 degree weather. You know, it's in the 50s and it might be in the low 70s. This might be a good transition piece. I don't know. I I am going to... I. <laughs> talking myself through this. I am going to put it aside because I want to get my daughter's made and finished once I get the yarn. It should be coming in this week. So maybe I can start on hers, maybe do this little holiday um, slip over. It's going to knit up quick because I think it takes, let me see, um, circular needles. Oh, US 15. So this will knit up quick. So I, I I'll probably get maybe knit that for myself. I, I bought a cranberry color because I thought that would be pretty. Um, but anyway, those are my knitting ones for the week. Um, not a ton. I mean, if you consider this, I mean, I I don't remember how much I had done on this last week, but I, I mean, I think I knit that much. There's a lot. I got a lot done. Um, the, but again, it'll be a surprise what I have my knitting ones for you next week because I really have no idea what I'm going to do. And we are also going to be delivering homeless hats on the 23rd whatever, the Wednesday, the week before, Wednesday falls a week later. So it's the week before Thanksgiving on a Wednesday. Um, this past week, we delivered 390 hats to our church for the, the lower income students at the schools that we sponsor. I'll put a picture of that. Um, it was amazing that that's what we collected throughout the year. So I might make a couple. I've got some um, bulkier yarns um, that I'm going to, I could knit up a two or three hats pretty quick for the homeless. So I might do that this week too. You know, I don't know, wherever God leads me, that's where I'm going to knit. Now I'd like to read my devotion from knitprayshare.com, and it is called Finding Gratefulness. And the scripture is Psalm 95.2. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. And that is the New Living Translation. And, you know, there's something else that I like to do. This is also my verse for no November to focus on, Psalm 95.2. And so I take my clip art and I put it on my phone. And so I, every time I pick up my phone, I see, let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. So that is just a reminder. Every time I pick up my phone, which is a lot, I get my little um, scripture there. So if you don't do that, that's something I would kind of encourage you to do to help, um, you know, imprint scripture on your heart. And just as a reminder each day throughout the day to be focused on God and giving him thanks. You know, you can't ever give God too much praise or worship. A few weeks ago, I mean, I shared with you how, you know, last Monday I had I had been sick the week before. You know, I, I went to bed Tuesday night or Wednesday night, or, uh, Tuesday night thinking, oh, I think I might be coming down with something. And then on Wednesday, you know, I'm like, okay, I think I, I feel okay. I don't, maybe not. Maybe I, you know, maybe it's just allergies. And then I went to knitting, felt great, went, went to go see my mom. And I was like, you know, mom. I, think I might be coming down with something. I'm going to kind of stay away from you. And then literally two or three hours later, it just hit me. And I was like, oh, I'm getting sick. I knew it. And when I woke up Thursday morning, like I shared with you last week, I just was achy and stuffy and, you know, I just didn't feel good. And um, what I forgot to talk about was that day when I went out to the mail, I had gotten a letter from one of my cousins. And I reconnected with a cousin. She's my age and she lives in another state. We just kind of lost you know, contact over the years. And then when she'd heard about my mom getting sick, she's been very good about sending me notes, sending me text messages, letting her, letting me know she's praying for me. And I just really appreciate that. And this particular day where I just felt ugh, yucky, I mean, it was just an effort to go out to the mailbox and then I get her sweet note. And I thought, oh, that was so sweet of her, you know? And on it, she had written grace, great fall, F-A-L-L, faith fall, joy fall, and mercy fall. And then as well as encouraging words and letting me know she's praying for me and what, what it was going on with my mom. And it was just a, rem a reminder for me on that day because I didn't really feel like thanking God. I felt pretty bad, you know, um, but it was just 
being thankful this fall for my faith, God's mercy, joy, and love that I have for him and each day that I am given. And, and then slipped into the card, there was this little, I should have brought it with me when I, um, uh, may, I'll put a little uh, picture of it, um, but it was just like a little um, day, a note from Day Spring, and it said on it, rest is possible with Jesus always. And I thought, look at God's perfect timing for that letter. Because for the past few weeks, I, I mean, you know, I didn't record. I was just going nonstop. I mean, go, go, go. I mean, that's how I felt. And God knew the only way that I was going to rest my body was to get a head cold. And it kept me home for three days. I didn't want to risk spreading that with anyone. I didn't work out. I didn't, I didn't even knit, you know? And so I truly rested when I didn't feel good. I didn't push myself. And it's because I knew my body needed it. And the only way I was going to recover was if I rested. And, you know, I know it's not always easy to find something in your day to give God thanks for. And you might have to search for it. But there are always nuggets of God's blessings throughout our day. Even when things look bad in our world, we can find something in our day for which we can praise God. So for me, from thanking God for a cold that I felt bad for three days instead of seven, because typically when I get a cold, it, it's like seven days where I'm kind of down and out. And I was able to go back to the gym on that Monday um, and so and work out. And I even you know ran yesterday, like I said. I mean, I, I felt great. And typically when I get a cold like that, it moves down into my chest, and it didn't. I mean, I God blessed me, and and, and again, I got on my immune my immune booster stuff, which I do think lessened the duration of my cold. But and then you know, it's, so it's from thanking God for you know maybe getting a head cold to thanking God for that front parking spot I got when it was raining and I didn't have my umbrella or my raincoat. So I mean, those are things we can thank God for, and thanking God for the rain because we haven't had a lot of rain in Texas, and so even though it was kind of dreamy and dreary and on those days, sometimes my mom's sundowners kicks in earlier and not later. And so, um, you know, I, I was, I'm, a, I'm okay with the rain and the dreariness, even in some of the effects that are from it because we needed the rain. I mean, it was, and now, oh my gosh, it's just beautiful, sunny, and just a beautiful day. Again, something to thank God for this beautiful day today. Having a thankful mindset isn't denying the reality of life's problems and what's going on in your life. But thanking God is a way for us to show him our love. And we can focus on what is good and God's truth for us when we're thanking him. Giving him praise for the promises he has kept and will keep and is keeping. And just thanking him, you know, for the love he shows me every day that he's shown me looking at his past faithfulness and knowing that he never leaves me. He's holding me by the right hand. He is by my side. His presence is with me wherever I go. And those are all things to thank God for every day. I mean, one day I was driving and um, a car had, was had slain on the brakes and I started to go over in the other lane and there was a car there and they went around. I mean, I, it was such a near miss. I was like, thank you, Jesus. I know God <laughs> spared me from that, right? Because that could have gone so bad so quickly, but there wasn't a car next to them. And I'm just... Those are things I'm like, thank you, Jesus. You know, you just, you find the little things and the big things to thank God throughout your day. I'd like to end with my prayer now. Father God, forgive me when I fail to thank you for what you've done for me each day. Help me to find joy in the middle of troubles and trials. Thank you for your promises of never leaving or forsaking, forsaking me. May I remember Psalm 95 two this week and every day. For me to come into your presence with thanksgiving and sing songs of praise to you no matter what difficulties I may face. I pray these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you again for joining me for episode 101. Um, if you are knitting, crocheting, praying over what you're making, please share with me on social media. I am at Knit Pray Share, but I just encourage you this time of the year, I'm going to keep, you know, hammering this home. Make gifts to bless people in your community. This is the perfect time to kind of get your, you know, dip your toe in the water to practice doing it because the more you do it, the easier it gets. And the more we're able to share God's love in our community to let those essential workers know that God loves them and they matter. God bless you. Have a great week. And ho hopefully I will be recording next week for episode 102. And again, I have no idea what I'm going to be knitting this week, but God does.